Okay, guys, welcome back. So I wanted to show you what I've been working on. So I've got several different theories of how I'm going to make a commutator or commuter commutator, I guess you call it, and a um, uh, I forget what you would call the other side. So the commutator would be on one side here, and then the other side would have the steady state connection. So I thought about taking a bearing like this one and getting the grease out of it and putting that on one side and connecting a wire to that for the steady state. And it would work. I've already checked it out. But then I also rigged this up. I wanted everything to be 3D printed. So this is a, uh, a contact for a brush. Or, yeah, it's the, I guess this is carbon or um, graphite or whatever it is. And I have this end here, this end cap here. And as you can see, if I go like this, you can see how that pushes up. And that would rest underneath there like that. Obviously, with some pressure on the bottom piece with the wire connected to that. And that would be the steady state of the commutator. Then for the actual commutator itself, I have this cylinder and I have different sleeves with one space, another sleeve with two spaces, another sleeve with three spaces. And what I would do is I would take this copper, which is very thin sheet copper, I would wrap it around this, put some on the inside that would connect to the outside. So I would wrap it around with two tangs that would go on the inside. This would then go on the end there. And then this guy would go over it like that. So as it spun, I would set up the timing in such a way where I think you guys can get the picture. It would spin. So that's that I'm definitely going to do that for the commutator site. And I, like I said, I made different ones. Uh, this has got two sides on it. Uh, this one's got three sides or three openings. This one has one. So I'll start out with the one and we'll go from there. So I need to build, I'm probably going to drill a hole in this so I can connect a wire to this guy. And then I will glue this guy shut like this, get the wire attached, and then build some kind of stand for this that has just a little bit of pressure up in here like this so that it's just pushing it up, as you can see, like that. Um, and if that doesn't work, I can always fall back on the bearing. I've actually seen this work before in other applications. But yeah, I ordered this thin sheet copper. This should work really well. Let me cut some up, wrap it around here, put, put you know, tangs inside there so that it makes the connection to the metal rod going through the stator, that guy. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, stay tuned. So it turns out it's going to be a little trickier than I thought. So this is the copper, right? And I'm going, oops, and I'm going to wrap it around this cylinder. And the plan was to wrap it around and then tuck these inside there. Oh, now that I'm, see, I love thinking out loud with you guys. I can do it a piece at a time. So I was thinking about doing it all at once, like wrapping it up like this and then trying to tuck it in. But I could wrap it like this, tuck it in wrap it some more tuck this one in yeah all right stay tuned so it turns out it wasn't as hard as i thought crazy glue and copper and plastic work really well together so i just have to trim this off and tuck this last one in there and then it should go on there and of course this is going to sit on there like that Actually, yeah, it'll go in 
I'll have to, well, I'm not going to do that yet, but yeah, you, you guys get the, uh, the idea. I think I'm going to start with one chamber like that. I'll glue the edges on, but I won't put any glue on there, obviously, and I won't put any glue on here. So this will make contact with the metal rod that goes through the uh, rotor. And yeah, hopefully I can get this bad boy running today. All right, stay tuned. Oh, and I, I've got another 3D part that I printed. I'll have to go and get it. But it's a Oh, hell, let me go get it. It's a, um, it's a, you know, it's a part that I printed out that has a base and a stem that comes up and I will mount something on there that'll hold another piece of, uh, this copper sheet, obviously with a wire attached to one of the endpoints or one of the inputs. I forget which one it actually is. If it's I think it's the uh, positive terminal from the battery or the negative. I don't know. I've got the drawing, so I can figure that out. Um, yeah, and that would that would actually press up against this guy here, like so, as it turned, you know, on, off, on, off, on, off, like that. You guys get it. All right, stay tuned. So I'm going to use these collets to hold the system tight. To hold the system tight. And in fact, I was going to use one of the collets as just a temporary commutator. I was going to figure out how I could, you know, put something on there that could stop any connectivity you know, make um, sections, but then I thought, no, 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 that's too hard. Actually, that would have been a lot easier than the path I'm going now. The path I'm going now is crazy, but it should work. So this guy's done. I just have to slide it on and it fits really nice and tight. Then I have to figure out how I'm going to mount this guy. Like I said, I think I need to drill a hole in here so I can attach a wire or just put a wire through there so it makes a connection or send the wire all the way through, solder it on there, and then slide it back down inside there. Then I have to figure out how I'm going to put pressure on this to push it up. I'll use probably a screw or something. And then I have to mount it to something so it'll sit like this. Not on this side, obviously, on the other side. And um, have a steady state of contact. I still really like this idea with the bearing because it's simple. And I may do that just for a first run. Let me go get the other parts that I 3D printed out so I could show you. All right, so here's the first one that I printed out. And as you can see, it's going to, let me bring you over here. It's going to rest up against the, the commutator like that. Obviously, it'll have some copper on there. This was the first one. It's, it's too stiff. So I printed out another one that has a lot of flex so I can push it up against there and obviously I'll I'll run a wire up through here like this and connect it to some um connect it to some um ah, copper foil I noticed that this is too big so I'm going to have to either put something on here which I probably will like I'll make a little bump on here like that and cover it with copper attach the wire run it down there and so that'll sit right there measure it out pretty good that's right on and again this one flexes so i can not press it too hard up against there but i'll have something like this on there you know 
that has copper on it so it can press up against there. You guys get the idea. Um, I just have to figure out how I'm going to do the other side. I think I might just do the other side with this one and run a wire up through there, put some copper on there, and just do it like this for the steady state. All right, stay tuned. All right, so it's been a while, <clears throat> excuse me, since I built a Newman motor. So I had to go online and get the uh, wiring figured out. So yeah, like I said, the positive from the power source goes to the commutator. The negative goes to the bottom wire of the bottom coil. And then the top wire... Yeah, the top wire from the top coil goes to the steady state. And then, of course, you've got your rotary magnet in the middle. Now, I don't know if this is the common way to do it. I don't know if you can put the negative to the commutator and vice versa. But this is they all seem to follow this same pattern. So I'm going to, I found this on, uh, I, you know, I, I just did a search for Newman motor diagram and this guy came up. So yeah, um, this is how I'm going to start it off. Now I don't remember, I remember the last time I built one, whether the poles have to be straight up and down and then the start of the connection to the commutator is facing a uh, horizontal or vertical with the with the poles of the magnet, if you know what I mean. And I can't remember. I remember that I had figured it out and was, you know, able to quickly set it up. So I'm going to start it off like that with the connection facing one of the poles. Um, and according to this. Well, I don't know if they actually meant it for you to do it this way with the north facing up and the south facing down. I don't think it really mattered. Well, it does matter, but yeah, I'll just do it like this and see what happens. All right, guys, stay tuned. Hopefully get this puppy running today. <clears throat> okay, so now that I got this set up, I can show you what I'm talking about so you get a better idea. So that's how the commutator is going to work. And again, I've got some printed out with two sides or two openings, three openings. I'm going to start out with the one opening just to see where that takes us. And hopefully that'll be tight enough on there. It, it's not super tight, but I think it's tight enough. Anyway, we'll uh, see. I still have to figure out how I'm going to trigger or what I'm going to put on the end of this it's that's not going to be too difficult to think of and then connect the wiring and probably just use this guy this bearing right now temporarily before I hook this puppy up which I really want to do because that's cool and it's 3d printed again my whole goal is to 3d print everything you know, short of the magnets and the wire and the metal rod, you know, and the connectors. I probably could have 3D printed these, but that's taking it a little too far. But yeah, I think that's going to work out great. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back. Sticking with the theme of wanting to 3D print everything, I made this. Here's the groove for the wire. So this guy will sit like this and then sit up against there like that. Um, of course, I'm going to run a wire here. I'm going to drill a little hole in there. And I'm going to glue some of the, the copper on there and attach the wire to it. I'll probably... Put the wire through there, spread the wire. I'll use frayed wire, spread the wire on there, and then glue this on there. All right, so let me get that going. 
stay tuned. All right, so it's coming along pretty good. So here's the idea. Here's the wire. And as you can see, I could probably use it just like this. I've got the wire sprayed out. Now, I don't know if it's these wires are too thin to use by themselves. That's why I'm going to put a piece of copper right there. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. And again, I don't know if this wire is going to be too thin for what I'm doing, but I will find out, won't I? <clears throat> all right. So that guy's all set up. Um, I still have to figure out how I'm going to do the other side. I think for right now, I'll just do it with the bearing. Um, because I don't really have the time to set that up right now. But I want to get a first run in. Trying this configuration out and see what it does. Alright, stay tuned. Alright, so I've checked it. And I've got continuity between the end of this wire. And the face of the copper um, contact, I guess you'd call it. So, yeah. Um, let's give this thing, let's set it up. I need to get a wooden base though, so I can mount all this onto it. Um, cause I don't have an acrylic base big enough. Anyway, stay tuned. All right. So <laughs> it's going, I have to play around with the different, um, with the different commutator setups. And again, this is just temporary, this bearing setup. 12.8 volts. If I press on it a little bit, it doesn't go the other way. Yeah, so it's okay. See, look, it's going really slow now because I have the commutator set up wrong. Yeah, anyway, I had it going. Oh, now it's all messed up. Sorry about that. So I had it going. So the concept does work. This guy does work. I have to, I think I'm going to change this out for the two prong one, I think that'll work better. And then of course I've got to finish this guy, putting this on there, I think will be better because even though this works, it's, I wouldn't call it intermittent, but because it's not a um, continuous contact, like when I did the continuity test with it, you can hear, the um the meter going beep 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 so there was intermittent connections but it does work let me see if i can change it around a little bit hold tight there it goes now it's working a little bit better but yeah i've got i figured out how the commutator has to go Oh, where's my glass plate? Oh, it's not going fast enough to throw magnets, so. But yeah, it's working good. I, the concept works. Let me shut it off. Ah, let me shut it off. So the concept does work. I need to figure out, um, or I need to change. Yeah, so the connection has to be horizontal with the magnets vertical. So yeah, it does work. It's very cool. I like this little setup right here. Now I need to do this. Like I said before, I need to get that so I have a solid contact. And then build out more of these. The next one I'll build out, uh, the comment here, the next one I'll build out will be the double, which will probably have on the horizontal plane a window here and a window here. And I think that'll increase the speed. And then I want to set this up as a generator. 
I've seen some, I forgot that I, I've done it before where I can um, see how much this guy is actually producing. All right. So that's probably all for today because this took a lot just to do this. So thanks for watching and maybe I'll do some more a little bit later on and record it or tomorrow, actually tomorrow, because tomorrow's my day off too. All right, guys, thanks. Stay tuned. One last glory shot or Zen shot. All right, stay tuned. It's going pretty good now. I pulled it closer towards the the arms. All right, enough of this. Thanks, guys. Later.